Peter and Harry test the limits of their new suits after turning on surprising new features, while Captain Britain and Wilson Fisk take steps to address Earth 6160's growing superhero problem. It's the strongest issue yet, and we're going to give you all the details in our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 7 from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comico Opinions. This is our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 7. I've enjoyed Jonathan Hickman's foray into the Ultimate Spider-Man canon, but the series hasn't managed to avoid at least one or two sticking points in every single issue, whether it's slow pacing, or a lack of focus, or just like that dinner party that didn't go anywhere. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, you never know what you're going to get. This time, we think we've got a solid winner on our hands. Ultimate Spider-Man finally breaks the mold with good pacing, interesting developments. When last we left Earth 6160 in Ultimate Spider-Man number 6, readers were treated to effectively an issue-long origin story explaining how Harry Osborn became the Green Goblin. Without getting into all the details that give you in the short version, Harry's parents died in the Council's attack on New York City, the one that was eventually blamed on Iron Lad, leaving the totality of assets in Oscorp to Harry, which forced him to grow up very fast. When Wilson Fisk generously sold him Stark Stain Industries, Harry acquired the technological genius of two mega corporations, leading to the discovery of Howard Stark's Iron Man armor and many concerning secrets about the council. In Ultimate Spider-Man number 7, which is the current issue, Otto Octavius gives Harry and Peter a crash course on the differences in their suits. Those differences give each hero unique combinations of strength and speed, but both suits can connect to a network to receive remote commands. Peter isn't particularly fond of that feature and he wants it turned off. And both suits can also be imprinted with a personal AI using the personality of anyone they choose. Unsurprisingly, Peter chooses himself, and Harry also, unsurprisingly, chooses his deceased father, Norman. Jonathan Hickman kicks the issue off on a fun and games note by playing with the cool toys and hinting at upgrades, which borrow heavily from the MCU version of Spider-Man. If you've watched the films, you know that the Tom Holland version of Spider-Man got this cool sort of super Spider-Man suit and that it has a built-in talking AI that gives him all kinds of additional capabilities and cool gadgets to mess with. However, Hickman takes the onboard AI concept a step further by allowing Harry and Peter to choose their avatars, which speaks volumes about their personalities and hang-ups, a development that may come into play a little bit later. Elsewhere, Gwen and MJ arrive at the offices of Ben and J. Jonah's fledgling new newspaper publication. They find, however, that the men are not there to show Gwen where her investment money went. What we see is that Ben and J. Jonah secretly meet with Robbie Robertson, who turns over incriminating information that he knows the Daily Bugle won't print. Their meeting concludes with the hint that Robbie will be changing jobs to work with Ben and J. Jonah in the future, but not right now because he wants to stay in the belly of the beast. Hickman's continuing focus on Ben and J. Jonah may seem inconsequential here, but their meeting suggests that Wilson Fisk's dealings with the council are going to come into the light of public scrutiny. To be clear, we never see what Robbie turns over, so we don't know exactly what secrets are going to be exposed, but based upon the reactions of the characters, it's going to be big. And this scene also helps increase that sense of momentum that all sides are starting to move towards a collision at some point in the future. The issue cuts to a quiet meeting between Captain Britain and Wilson Fisk. Now, if you read Ultimates number one and thought that Captain Britain died, no, he didn't. There's a little caption in there that says, no, he managed to get away. So it appears that his rumors of his death are greatly exaggerated. Britain and Fisk are increasingly concerned about the emergence of superheroes. So Britain brought more assassins who are basically a group of bullseye clones to take care of the situation. Fix tells Britain that there's no need because he has a plan, and his plan involves... Hickman smartly uses this scene to confirm that the council is aware of heroes, is no longer tolerant of heroes running around doing whatever they want to do, and is willing to take steps to eliminate those heroes. Even if the Maker's return wasn't looming, the scene serves as a clear motivation to help drive the Avengers forward in protecting the Earth against nefarious forces. Also... Fisk's last statement could signal that we'll see an ultimate version of the Sinister Six. Later, we catch up with Harry and Peter who are sparring using their suits and they're being monitored by Otto Octavius. He wants to get a baseline and they want to see how hard they can hit, how well they can dodge, etc, etc. Once the two get their licks in to establish that baseline, Otto activates the AI based upon the imprints both of them have chosen. The issue concludes with leveling up, two very different forms of encouragement, 
and a scheduled visit. Overall, Ultimate Spider-Man number 7 is the most structurally sound and entertaining issue yet. You get character development, action, intriguing teases, and momentum towards some kind of goal. Hickman may have taken too long to get the title on very short footing, which is what we see here, but this issue hits an enjoyable stride. Let's switch gears and we'll talk about the art. Marco Cicchetto continues to prove he was the right choice for this series. Cicchetto has a great eye for scale by delivering clean, visually engaging panels that work equally well whether they're close-ups or wide shots or medium shots. The action hits with speed, direction, and force, and the character acting through their facial expressions and gestures is excellent. Plus, you've got Matthew Wilson's grounded colors that look amazing and are a perfect pair with Cicchetto's pencils and inks. Final thoughts, what do we think about Ultimate Spider-Man number seven? This is probably the strongest issue in the series so far because the plot takes center stage over the world and the character building. Hickman tends to spend a little bit too much time with world building and forget that the story has to move forward. That seems to be corrected here. He delivers a feast of engaging character moments, action, intriguing teases, and the sense that the series is building towards something important. Plus, the art team's output is spectacular. Therefore, Ultimate Spider-Man number 7 from Marvel Comics earns an 8.8 .8 out of 10. This comic doesn't have the big wow moments you might expect, but what it lacks in spectacle, it makes up for in every category that counts. But what do you think? Are you reading all the Ultimate titles? And if so, which one is your favorite? Give us a thumbs up if you like what Hickman is doing on Ultimate Spider-Man and leave us a comment below with your prediction about which Ultimate version of a 616 character will show up next. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be very much appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.